What's up my friends, my name is Charlie Talk, and today I have a special video for you because you will be learning the most important topics about Rigobot. Rigobot is an artificial intelligence application I have uh, almost a year working on and you will see how it can be used to reach new levels of productivity under your work. The voice that you will listen from now is my own cloned AI voice, uh, so don't worry about the lips sizing because uh, it doesn't matter, it is the same information but I didn't want to make a video in two languages at the same time, so I decided just to make first a Spanish version and after that I made an English version using AI. So I hope you enjoy it. So let me explain what Rigobot is, what it's used for and how you can use it. This video is mainly focused on people who work at 4Geeks or who are students at the academy. So, let's start from scratch. What is Rigobot? Rigobot is an artificial intelligence application that allows you to use generative AI as mentioned. But how does it work? Rigobot is a layer above AI models that lets you customize the AI responses and allows you to add extra information like context. For example, you can add a web page to Rigobot or simply add a completion, which is a question and answer that you want the chatbot or the app in general to have as context based on certain questions. For instance, you can train an AI to know about four geeks and to always give you accurate answers to your questions or respond exactly how you want based on certain types of questions. Another thing you can do with AI mainly is to use prompts. A prompt is a piece of text that you give the AI to generate a certain result. Nowadays, many people work as prompt engineers. Basically, you have to modify a text so that the AI functions as you want. This is how AI works for most of the large models, and learning to use Rigobot will also give you the basics to use any AI application. Essentially, Rigobot also works through prompts, you can also have prompt templates, which are predefined prompts that receive some variables of interest. For example, suppose I work in the marketing department and want to make a speech, a script for a TikTok video. I can simply generate a prompt template so that the AI generates a video script for me. And all I have to pass on instead of writing it each time is what I want the video to be about, for example. And maybe it's duration. That's it. The AI takes care of everything for you, you press a button, and you have it done. Then you can edit it if you wish, in case you want a different response or maybe want to add a little more or edit the information the AI is giving you. But well, what can and can't Rigobot do? What is Rigobot used for? Why should I use it? As mentioned, Rigobot lets you have, let's say, it at your fingertips simply because you have an extension that I'm going to show you how to install in your browser. You can simply pass the variables you need and that's it. Use AI for the most repetitive tasks of your day. For example, you can also pass it, for example, imagine you have to make a web page scheme if you're a student or if you work in another department that's not marketing. Suppose you work in the mentor department and you have a student with a CSS error, and he passed you a screenshot of what it looks like. You could simply pass that screenshot to Rigobot, and with the necessary context, it can give you precisely the right answer according to what you have been explaining and how you have configured Rigobot to work. So, well, this is much better understood when you see it live, but, well, Rigobot can accept images, can accept text. I'm also working on it generating audio because I can already generate audio. In fact, if you are listening to this video in English, probably the voice you hear is artificial intelligence. This voice is basically cloned with my own voice, and soon Rigobot will also be able to delve into that area. So let's see what Rigobot is good for too. And one of the things that works that I love about Rigobot is that you can greatly increase your productivity. If someone asked me why use Rigobot, I would say it's for that. You can increase your productivity because you can automate the repetitive tasks of your job. 
you can make it much simpler and gradually start integrating AI into your workflow to be more productive, have more free time for yourself. Why not say it? And even make your work much better. You have to be very careful with AI also, because it can happen that our brain gets so used to using artificial intelligence that instead of using our brain, we use AI. And that's not the idea. But well, let's see how it works in real time. I'm going to show you how to install Rigobot and how you can start using it if you are members of 4Geeks or if you just felt like creating an account on Rigobot. Okay, let's go then. I'm going to open my browser, and well, the first thing we're going to do is search here Chrome Web Store and enter. And when we are in the Chrome Web Store, we search for Rigobot GPT, and here it is. When Rigobot GPT is on the main page, all you have to do is press the install button that will appear around here. In this case, I already have it installed, so it's not necessary to do it. But well, when you have it installed, you can see that Rigobot will appear up here where your extensions are. I have two because I have one version installed and one version in development, which is the one I'm adding new features to. So, well, let's log out here, and I'm going to log in to Rigobot. To log in, simply do so with your 4Geeks account if you are members of 4Geeks. Enter the key you would normally enter in 4Geeks and hit the login button, and that's it. You're in, you can log in, and all you have to do is select the purpose of your interest. For example, if you're part of the mentors team, for example, you could select this one up here called Ideal for Geeks Mentor. When I click on Use a Template, for example, I can see the templates this particular one has. This one, for example, has a code interpreter that you pass code to. For example, I'll put print and I'll put hello world here. For example, in this case, I'm doing something with Python, and the theory is that he should give me the result of the terminal output that template should give me, and check it out. There it is, hello world, which is what it should correctly give me. So, well, let's see something else. Let's go, for example, here, to select another purpose and see what else we can do. For example, I'm going to select this same mentor, and I'm going to click on start conversation. When I give it start conversation, basically, I have this interface here, and I can ask it questions. I'm going to ask it, for example, how can I learn CSS? For example, I'm going to ask that question and see that it immediately gives me information from 4Geeks in this case because I already added it previously to the Rigobot database for this purpose in general. Check out that I have a Learn Pack tutorial, open it, and here, for example, I have the repository of interest in this case. So basically, that's how it works. And what's happening underneath? Why is he giving me this answer? Basically, because it has previously been added to the database. I can go here, for example. Ah, uh, well, let me show you other things, and that is that you can also teach Rigobot. In this case, I can't do it with this account because this is not an expert account, let's say in this organization, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the same thing. I'm going to log out and I'm going to log in with another email that I have over here that is an email that has more permissions, let's say. And well, when I log in with this particular email, I'm going to go here, for example, Idea for Geeks Mentor and, well, I'm going to click on Teach Rigo, and for example, I'm going to give this answer, select the purposes that interest me in this case, and hit Go. That's it. When I click on Go, basically, I can answer questions that have already been added by the administrators or the AI itself to Rigobot to be able to, let's say, train or prepare the AI for the questions people could ask. In this case, I'm going to add a new question, for example, and I'm going to put, how can I learn Python in 4Geeks? For example, something like that, right? And I'm going to look here for a 4Geeks tutorial in the learning library. And I'm going to put Python, for example. That's just something I did a little while ago, and I'm going to pass this one. For example, just this one here it is. And I'm going to tell him, simply put it here, follow this learn pack tutorial. In this case, this may not be the best answer because maybe I want the idea to answer me sometimes in a bigger way. But in this case, I'm going to leave it like that because I simply want to show you how it works. 
when I add this completion, basically I'm going to show you a bit the Django admin view of Rigabot. It's added over here in the database, and I already have it here. Perfect. So here I already have this completion approved. I simply click here. I selected it and approved it. And now I'm going to ask this question or a similar question to the 4Geeks mentor over here. Let's go into the 4Geeks mentor, start a conversation. And I'm going to tell him, I want to learn Python. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. And what's going to happen is that he's going to give me information. He's going to give me information similar to what I gave him in the completion. Why? Because he used that information that I gave him to generate his response, basically. Of course, maybe just passing this tutorial or this answer is not appropriate. Maybe we want a more personalized response, but that's why we can customize the experience or the context that this artificial intelligence will receive. So, well, I'm going to select now, for example, this purpose called SEO Writer, and I'm simply going to use this template that's here that says Generate Description for Blog Topic, and I'll put a, well, let's put this to see what happens. That's what's already there. I had surely used it before, so he's going to generate a description of an article that is for SQL basically in this case of 150 words because that's what I asked him for only that this text is already prepared for SEO because I already gave him the information on how I want it how I want that text to sound basically so in this case I'm using it for SEO but I could use it for marketing I could use it maybe to write a letter of recommendation or a welcome letter to a colleague whatever really it can be used for whatever you want because one can customize these prompt templates and add them based on the purpose you're working on at the moment. Sure, for example, I can show you a purpose of my own, which is this one here called Charlie Talks Mind, which is basically one that I use. And if I'm going to start a session with it, for example, I'm going to ask him, what projects are your favorite ones? Something like that, I'm going to ask him a question and he should answer me as I would answer in theory, right? Let's see what he says in this case. My internet is not so good. Well, check it out, for example, that now he's giving me information about some of the projects I've worked on. Why? Because I gave him the information on how to respond based on these cases, basically. Or I just gave him information on what my projects are, and that's it. He will decide how much he responds. Check it out, that I wasn't even specific about projects I've worked on. Not even because it's supposed that he is a Charlie Talks mind He's serving as a second mind for me, basically. So, for example, I can come here and I can already try a LearnPack code space, for example, just because I included it here in the chat. Super useful, super cool to have an interface like this in which you can work. Also, check out another thing. Let's go. Let's search for an image on the internet of a particular food. For example, let's search for butter chicken. Search for butter chicken. And I'm going to take a picture of this, for example. Okay, this, I'm going to search for butter chicken. And I take a picture of that image. I just took a screenshot, and now I'm going to select a purpose, like this one here, or this same one. I'm going to tell him, I'm going to select Chaito, which is another one that I use a lot, because I use it mostly for work. And... Well, I look for Chaito here and check out what happens. I pass the image. In this case, it's already added and everything. I don't even have to go out of the application again. And I'm going to tell him, give me a recipe for the plate on the image, for example. I tell him to give me a recipe for the plate that's in the image. So what happens? He receives the information and check out that, in fact, he does it well. In this case, it's a chicken tikka masala, which is exactly this one here. This Indian butter chicken is called tikka masala. But, well, perfect there. They are basically some of the use cases that can be given to Rigabot. Really, the use cases are infinite. It depends on your work. And to start using it, you just have to install the extension and start looking at the prompt templates that each of the purposes has. And if you want to add more prompt templates, you can communicate with your project manager, for example, or you can contact me anywhere on any social network. You can simply look for me on LinkedIn 
or write to me at my institutional email from 4Geeks in the description of the video. I'm going to leave you more information, some links of interest in case you want to use Rigabot a little more, and well, that's all. Basically, I hope you liked it. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave them in the comments box and I will answer them.